It's not quite two years since Plasticity 1.0 was released and not quite two years since I downloaded a trial and made a YouTube video flapping about what just a good thing it was. If I only ever had that version of Plasticity, honestly, I'd still be happy. But subsequently, Nick and the team have been working rigorously, routinely releasing regular, relevant, and frankly rewarding renditions of this software. 2025.1 is not an exception, but it is exceptional. Why? Because it adds features, eliminates clicks, stamps out jank, and builds on what already exists. A modeling experience where each aspect individually analyzed cannot describe the aggregate experience. Put plainly, plasticity is more than the sum of its parts, and that's down to hard work and tenaciously sticking to a vision that is CAD software for artistic workflows. And I couldn't be happier with how it's progressed and how this release has come together. Now let's have a look at why that is. Now, I've been using the beta version for some time now and incorporating new features into my workflow, including on some paid jobs, so it's already been serving me well. I did do a, a video recently on some of my favorite beta features where I did a bit of a dive into some of the features that are now in this main uh, stable release. So feel free to check that one out. In this video, we're going to do a quick overview of some of the latest features in the UI overhaul and couple of the things that I missed in that last video. Now the UI is the thing that stands out the most in this new release. And it isn't just cosmetic. The creator of Plasticity, Nick, has previously stated that a good part of this redesign was to prepare Plasticity to be a little bit more modular for better things to come. In the meantime, in my opinion, it's not only nicer to look at, but easier to use. It also feels a little bit more snappy than it did in the beta version. So that's good to know that a little bit of that, you know, that jank's been uh, ironed out. Now, I will have uh, more in-depth content coming on the latest release, so feel free to subscribe and like. And just while I've got you, I am a Plasticity affiliate, so you can use my code REFUGE10 on either the studio or the indie license for new users only. So um, yeah, you get a discount, channel gets a little commission, uh, it helps me out, uh, it helps you out, we all win. So the first thing that you will notice when you open up the 2025.1 version of Plasticity is the UI is quite a lot different. It still has roughly the same layout, um, but it's been prettified, it's been, it's been made to look a little bit nicer, and you'll notice a few differences straight away. First of all, the toolbar here with you know your curves and whatnot on it is now on the left hand side, but you can wiggle it back to the right if you need to. So that's been, uh, that's handy. Um, it would be cool if we could put it up the top or something like that, but for now that's great. Um, and then you'll notice that the right hand panel is a little bit different because it's now little menus and these little menus you can just keep the ones that you use open so you know um, that's really handy also um, you can leave them all shut and you can just left click hold down and then just drag over with your mouse still being held down and unleft click and you'll get all of that um, it'll auto collapse so that's really cool and some of these other things that were previously obfuscated like grid um, camera FOV um, and other things are now in this menu so you don't have to sort of I think you used to have to right click on that to change the FOV so just these little quality of life things that just reduce the amount of clicks and make life easier so all of this stuff reducing clicks is going to mean that you can do your work much quicker uh, in plasticity now um, what else has changed uh, in the preferences we have an under appearance we've got some new settings so we've got like a supporting color accent color like previous we can change that around and if I just um, change my shader here and let's just do a raise degree command on this cube a couple of times and I'm just gonna um, drag it off to the side here and we'll go into point mode so we can see that if we go back into preferences and appearance um, we can change the size of vertices and control points and make them a bit bigger and we can also change the size of our edges although you might not see that um, 
go straight away so you can actually just restart plasticity and sometimes you've got to do it twice okay and then now you can see I've got my fat edges and my points are bigger and I actually quite like this this look with the with the nice fat edges it reminds me of stroke in Photoshop so that's all nice and well now the next thing that you might notice different is that this bottom bar is a little bit different now it's got all of your usual commands that were there like move rotate and scale honestly plasticity is a keyboard orientated software you're going to be just using the shortcut keys there scale rotate and move but if you are one of those strange people that like to use uh, these things to um, you know alter your object then that's great but using those keyboard shortcuts um, you know R then X you know and you've got your context menu down here so that's always great that's always going to be quicker you know G Y we can move that across or GG we can move it in screen space these things are much quicker than using this down here now we've got our duplicate object boolean which is Q you know if you want to boolean an object you can always um, you know do what we've always done and you just go Q Q and you select your other object or W for a difference and then we've got something like this you know and you can just play around with whatever right so um, that's cool but on the left hand side you'll notice this uh, magnifying glass and that's your search menu which previously was only accessible by pressing F and you can still press F to get that under the cursor but now let's say I've got a face selected we have this suggested commands list which suggests chart commands and then grays out ones that are not really usable in this thing so if I wanted to do raise degree um, I could just raise degree on that right and you can access that by pressing shift and F okay so you can get that one under your cursor as well now I, I think this is just a stroke of genius because um, you know pressing F you know THICK to thicken something or um, something like that just these uh, commands here are just there they're thickens there so if I wanted to you know thicken a sheet you know I can shift F thicken and boom right that is many clicks reduced right I don't even have to type a word to find that command um, so that's all good um, now that's just a basic overview of the UI I think I will do a more comprehensive video on the UI because there are a lot of changes um, I just want to cover some uh, other things now so if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that I'm probably more in the like a direct modeler like I like to do solid modeling a lot I do a bit of surfacing uh, where it's needed but mostly I like to make my models through direct modeling so I always get excited when there's new uh, modeling tools that are kind of cross between surfacing tools and one thing that I missed out um, if we just um, take this sheet here um, I'll just bring it to the center all right and we'll just scale it out a bit right was the proportional editing of CV so I'm just gonna uh, shift S a couple of times to uh, raise the degree on this okay so now we've got proportional editing of CVs so if I select a CV a, a control vertex and press G to grab it and then move it I get this fall off like this okay and proportional is excuse me uh, set to none okay if I select it to all it's going to um, select all of the CVs and I can start to build up the shape like this so I'm getting a different kind of shape but if I say for example select these two CVs and then select this one and then uh, grab that CV there and turn on all okay it's going to acknowledge these two other selected CVs and I can start to make some really interesting shapes and I missed out on this when I was um, doing the beta feature so I'm going to select this one this one and this one last okay and I'm going to press G and I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to select this to all 
Okay, or I can select this to selected only and it's only going to acknowledge those two. So now I'm starting to build up this shape. So once again, I could select this one, this one, and this one, press G and do selected only. And as I pull this one up, it's going to pull those other ones up and leave these ones in place. So you'll notice that they're not moving at all, right? They're staying in place, but these other ones are moving. So I'm using proportional editing to get this nice shape. So as we play around with this, um, we can start to get some really cool shapes. So let's like maybe give another uh, two subdivisions. Okay. And I want to grab this and this G selected. And it's not really going to affect because it's too far away, but I can change the fall off. All right, so um, if I go to selected and I can change the fall off to something like, I don't know, 10, it should now, oh, it's not responding in this case, maybe it's too far away, but let's do it with um, these and select this one last. And we can go G, selected, and pull that up like that. So now that we're getting this cool shape, we can use another one of the new commands, which is the slide command. Okay, so so G is to grab. Okay, and if we look in our commands list and type in SLID, we can get the slide command, or we can go Shift G to do the slide command. And now what we can do with the slide command is we can actually move these CVs along their curve. All right, so this is the curve. So if I go Shift G, um, so this is moving it in this direction, this direction, this direction, and the yellow one is always along the normal. So now we can start to build up much more interesting shapes, okay? So you can see that I'm starting to build something here, right? So what, what can we turn this into? So this is kind of like how I like to play around. We could scale these in a little bit, right? And let's just toggle our points so you can um, it should be under the shift F menu. No, it's not. So it's under F T O G G. I've got it set to Z. So we could toggle our points. Um, we could try and thicken this sheet, but what I might try and do is actually just um, shift D and drag it down and let's just try and loft it together. Okay. Give that a nice G one continuity and we can hit J and J and J and now we've got a solid and we can find our object. Another little thing that you might notice um, is when I orbit, you can see a little dot, okay, um, just there, and that dot is what I'm orbiting around. So that's a new feature as well, and it just helps you find your way, find your place in the in the world. So I'm just going to go Alt, Control, and click to select the edge ring, okay, and now we're starting to get a shape up here like this, okay, and We've got this really interesting shape coming up. I might offset this if I can. And so there you can see we've got some kind of, um, I don't know, like a bike seat kind of thing. So I don't know, that looks cool. And it was like interesting shape made very simply with these new tools that are now part of the um, part, of, part of plasticity. So the next feature is X nerves and square only. So if we, um, let's bring in a center circle. Okay, just make a cylinder out of it. Okay, just give this a little bit of a shape. Okay. And then we bring in a square. Okay, so we can bring in a um, center rectangle. Okay. We just want to make that square. You can um, constrain it to being a square by pressing S. And if we just imprint that on there, and then we can we'll delete the curve first, and then we'll delete that. So if we select this square ring and we can run the uh, X nerves command stick it to G2 okay we now have this tension option 
okay, if we stick it to quad sided, okay, so it only works on quad sided. And now we can add tension to this, okay, so this is really handy, right, for thing. And then obviously, if you run it with the square command, okay, you can increase your spans and degrees, and you can get a lot more um, precision. We'll call that, let's make this crank it up. Um, and we'll go G2, and then we can um, run the um, the weight on that, and the deviation, and we've got the tension here, so we can run that tension and flatness. Okay, so we can get really interesting shapes here. So this is, uh, you know, obviously it's not joined together, I haven't pre precisely done this, but um, that gives you a lot of control over, over that. Now, um, the other interesting thing is if we just um, get rid of that altogether and uh, make this a solid, okay, okay, and then if we hollow this solid, so we can go use our shift, uh, sorry, our shift F uh, menu and go hollow. Alt Z to go into x-ray mode so we can see our hollow solid okay and now we've got section analysis as well so we can now see inside hollow objects so that's about it thanks for watching don't forget if you're looking to buy plasticity you can use my code refuge 10 to get a 10% discount also on blender market there's a uh, sale on at the moment so you can get my assets Engon Pro and Matt Caps Forever as a cheaper option. I'm going to extend that to the Gumroad as well, as well as for some of my plasticity uh, assets like the Radial Manual Builder and the Screw Kit Bash and everything. So I'll put 30% discount off on all my Gumroad as well. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Tschüss!